All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna try and go through some two problems that I found that I've done in the past and there are, one of them is easy and one of them is medium. And they're, they're similar problems. Um, they ask pretty much for the same. They just have like a little bit of differences here and there on what the problem is asking. All right, so let's let's go ahead and go through this problem real quick what are we doing here well in here we are given an array of integers and the array is just named nums so we're given here an array of integers and an integer target so we're given our target right here so we're given an array of integers and an integer target and then we are asked to return the indices of the two numbers such that they add up to the target okay so we need to find two numbers in our array that ma that match you know that added together give my target you may assume that each input would have exactly one solution so we're not gonna find multiple solutions which is good they're letting us know that if it exists there's only gonna be one solution and you may not use the same element twice that makes sense right like for example if we have right here this list or this array and we're given 2 7 11 15 and our target is let's say 22 we cannot use two 11s to you know to, to say that we do have 22 so we would have to use separate um separate items because we cannot use the same element twice so if we're gonna try and decide if the item is there it has to be two different items um if we use a for loop i would actually have to use two for loops right i would actually have to use two for loops because for every item in my array i have to check every other item in the array to make sure that that the item exists so we would do something like for int i um equals zero i is less than nums.length and we increment i so we're gonna go through each item in the array and then for each of those items so in j equals zero um j is less than nums and length as well and then with j plus plus and what we're doing here is that we're gonna go and, and i'm following your approach just to, to see if we can solve it like this but basically we're using two for loops and then we are going for every item in my array then i'm gonna go through every other item in my array and i'm gonna try and check if the items match right so um let's say we start at zero then we would go let's let's see with this one we would have i here and then j will be checking every other item so we would check it's two plus seven equal to nine it's 11 plus 2 equal to 9, it's 15 plus 2 equal to 9, and then do the same for the other ones until we find our values. So um, one thing that we do want to do is if, um, so if i is equal to j, then we just want to continue. Why do we want to continue if i is equal to j? It's because they tell us here that we cannot use the same element twice. So if my i is equal to my j, and for example here, let's say that we had target four and if my i and my j are both at the same spot then that would technically say that it that it is a, a valid case and it would try to return zero and zero but that's that's not that's not allowed based on what they tell us here if um my nums at i plus the nums at j is equal to my target right so if the number uh the first number is equal to the second number that i'm or, or the the sum of the two numbers are equal to the target over here then we know we can return what we need to return so in this case it's asking us to return an array of integer so i'm just gonna do a new um int array and in here i'm gonna have um i comma j and then lastly if we just reach the end and we didn't find anything we're just going to return a, an empty there we go so this this works right at least it passes my my three test cases let me submit this and it actually submits it so it says that i'm, I'm running very very slow and yeah i implemented this just to kind of show that this is indeed an approach and that's probably what i would think the first time right like if i'm looking at this and i'm trying to compare one item to every other item i would definitely probably just go with um with a double loop but now let's go ahead and take a look right because it says that we're running in in 104 milliseconds and we're all the way back here but we see that some people are getting answers 
that run in like zero milliseconds or even like 40 milliseconds, right? Like it seems like this is very big. So let's try to analyze here the the um, runtime complexity of this algorithm. Um, it is big O, right? It's, it's big O notation. So how do we find the big O notation here? Well, we mainly wanna look at things like loops and operations that we're doing, right? So we wanna make sure that we consider based on our input size, how many times this algorithm is running, right? So based on, on our input size or in our nums, we are running through the array once, right? So we're running through the array once. That means that if I have three items, I'm only gonna run through the array three times um, or, or I'm only gonna loop three times. If my array has a million items, I'm gonna loop a million times, right? So with this first for loop right here, we are running n times. So we are running n times um, where n is the numstat length, right? Or the input size. So in the first for loop, we're running n times. And n is just the amount of, like how many items we have in our array. So n is gonna be one if our array only has one item or it's gonna be, you know, a million if my array has a million items. So that's in the first for loop, but then we have a nested for loop. So that means that for every single item in my array, I'm gonna run through every other single item in my array and try to compare them. So that means that for every N or for every item, I'm gonna run N more times. So since I have the two for loops, I would be running um, n times times n times because for every item um, we're gonna run n times again so I would be running n times n which at the end of the day is just n square um, n square so our algorithm as it has right here with two for loops runs in O of n square which this is just uh, called um, quadratic so this runs in quadratic time right o of n square and this approach gets it done as we saw it passes all of our test cases it works great but now can we improve this algorithm right now now that we know um what the runtime of this is which is n o of n square how do we improve it like can we actually run make this run faster and at least some of these uh, like this metrics right here might give us a little bit of uh, of information that we indeed can run a whole lot faster. We can run in even zero milliseconds according to this. I don't know if we're gonna get there, but we're gonna try and make it better. Let's go ahead and solve it. And yep, yeah, Mohammed, I, th I think you're on the right track. Um, the best way to solve this, um, at least that I can think of in the moment, there's probably other even better ways to do it. But I think one of the easiest, easiest ways to solve this is using a hash, um, either a hash set or a hash map. Um, it really depends on what you, your, your preference. So let's go ahead and try and solve it with a hash map. So let's go ahead and keep in mind this algorithm right here. I'm just gonna comment it out for now, but just so that we can keep it in mind and, and understand that it was O of N squared. So let's go ahead and try and solve it with a hash map and see if we can improve on this. So if you're not familiar with a hash map, a hash map is a key value pair. Um, what does that mean? So you can think of like a JSON object if you're worth if you've worked with JSON before So hash map resembles something very similar to this where I have my key and then I have a value Over here. So this is pretty much what a what a hash map represents Of course, it has like a bunch of other things inside to make it faster make it work smoother and so on but in a nutshell a hash map is just a key value pair and the good thing about this is that one, keys have to be unique. So we know that if there's something in my in my hash map, there, there can only be one key that's named key. Like I cannot do this. I cannot do this, for example, like having two keys be the same, value two. I cannot do this because my hash map, I always have to have one key. Um, per value, like I, like I cannot have multiple keys that are the same. Now, I can do this, I can have key and key two, and I can have the values be the same. This is okay. The key has to be unique, but the value doesn't have to be unique. The value can be the same as other key. As long as our keys are unique, 
then um, we know that we're that we're good to go. And also the good thing about um, a hash map is that we can add and get items from our hash map in constant time. What does constant time mean? That no matter how many items are in my hashtag in my hash map hashtag, it doesn't matter how many items are in my hash map. I can always get them in the at the same time. So if I have one item or a million items in my hash map, since I can add and and, and get items to and from my hash map, um, I can always get them in in constant time. This is gonna be a new hash map, and it's gonna have integers as the key and integers as the value. And why am I doing this? Well, first. I know that my array is of integers, so I want to make sure that I can map a specific value and I can have it in my as my key. Uh, four, five, six. If I have four, five, six, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the key of the item. So the key of the item is gonna be four, at least for the first one, and the value is gonna be zero. So I'm gonna have key. Um, key four, value zero. Why value zero? Because that's just the index. Uh, or the position that my item is. Now, what am I gonna do? Well, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through every number. So I'm gonna go through every number in my um, in my array. So um, int i equals zero, um, i is less than numstand length, and then we're gonna increment that i. So I'm gonna go through every item in my array, and I'm gonna add it to my map. So I'm gonna do map that put. And again, as I said, the key is gonna be the actual number. So that's gonna be, you know, whatever. In this case, the keys are gonna be two, seven, 11, and 15. And the value is just gonna be the index of where I'm, of where I'm at. Now that I already have this into my hash map, I'm gonna loop once more. I'm gonna loop through my, um, through my array again. So I'm gonna loop int i equals zero. i is less than um, some leg. Ooh, I have the hiccups. Um, I plus plus. So I'm gonna loop through my array once more, and I'm gonna do the following. First, I'm just gonna go ahead and set um, a variable here to just keep track of, of the current item that I'm going through. So I'm going through my array again, and then I'm gonna check. I'm gonna do something fancy here. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna check if my map contains the key um, or contains a key. So what key do I wanna find? Well. If we look at my map, let's say with this example right here, two, seven, 11, and 15. So if I look at my map, my map will most likely look uh, something like um, like this. And I'll, um, I'll comment it. So my map looks something probably like this. Um, two, zero, seven, one, 11, two, 15, three. So this is what my hash map looks like, more or less. So. What do I want to do here, right? On that second time that I'm looping through my hat, through my array, I'm gonna, I, I want to check if an item exists in my array, or sorry, exists in my hash map. And the item that I want to check is an item that matches the sum of the value that I want to get. So what does that mean, right? Like we know that we need to find two indices or two values that equal to the target. So for example, two plus seven, um, two plus seven is equal to nine. Right, like we wanna, we wanna determine if we can find this. So how about we reorganize this a bit, right? Like what is two plus seven equals to nine um, equal to? Well, that's equal to nine minus seven is equal to two, right? I'm just reorganizing the the uh, the the equation, but but it's doing the same, right? Like I just move my nine um, to the other side, and then um, or actually in this case I'm just moving the seven to the other side. So I'm just subtracting seven from this side, and then I, I get the same equation, right? It's the same equation, it's just reorganized different. So let's go ahead and do that. So what would I do here? So I'm gonna check if my map contains the key target minus current value. So if it contains like, for example, nine minus seven. So nine minus seven would be equal to two. I'm basically checking if my map has the value two um, or the key two in this case. But I cannot just live with this. Like I have to do an extra step. Why? Because they're telling us here, you may not use the same element twice. So we cannot use the same element twice, right? 
So similar to what we did over here that we were doing like if I is equal to J just continue because that means they are the same item. I'm gonna do something similar here. What I'm gonna do is, hey, if I try to get that items, if I try to get that items um, index, and that item index is not equal to I, so it's not equal to the same index that I'm currently at, then that means that the item is a different one. So I can return um, a new integer array. I'm gonna return a new integer array, and then I'm gonna have the first value is just gonna be the index that I'm currently at, and then the other value is the current, it's the, um, this right here. That's the other index that I found. And that's pretty much it. And lastly, same way as the other one, if we got to the end and we didn't find anything, then I'm just gonna return an empty array. And you can you can declare an empty array like that or just by putting zero in there. Doesn't really matter, I think it does the same. And I think this is pretty much it. This is pretty much it. Let's go ahead and run this again. Okay, it's passing all of the test cases. Now, let me submit this and let's see if that changes. Look at the difference now. Now we're running in four milliseconds and we're beating 62% of people. Isn't that insane? Like I'm still solving the same issue, but now I'm running 100 milliseconds less. Like that's orders of magnitude, ma uh, yeah, orders of magnitude less. How do I know if I'm ready for medium or hard problems? Honestly, that can be deceiving, dude. Like sometimes I've done some easy problems that are harder than hard problems. And sometimes I've done some hard problems that are so so freaking easy so i don't think there's like a like a specific oh now i'm ready to because again i think they're not really labeled properly so i would just say give it a shot give it a shot with a hard one give it a shot with a medium and see what they are okay so given an array of characters chars compress it using the following algorithm okay so we're given um a list or an array in this case of different characters. Compress it using the following algorithm. Begin with an empty string S, and then for each group of consecutive repeating characters in characters, if the group's length is one, append the character to S. Otherwise, append the character followed by the group length. The compressed string should not be returned separately, but instead, be stored in the current input character array. Note that the group lengths are 10 or longer. That are 10 or longer will be split into multiple characters in chars. After you are done modifying the input array, return the new length of the array. You must write an algorithm that uses only constant extra space. Okay, so yeah, in this case, they're asking us to do that um, constant space, right? Like you wanna make sure that you don't, you're not keeping any any other array or any other hash map or anything like that. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, how long do you think is enough for trying to solve a problem before looking at the solution? Um, depends on where you're like where you are and how soon you're trying to interview. But typically I try to do like about one hour. So I try to do something like between 30 minutes and an hour. So we begin with, begin with an empty string S and for each group of consecutive repeating char characters, so we're gonna have repeating characters. So for example, here we have A repeats twice, B repeats twice, and C repeats three times. So we would have um, the output returns six. Well, what is this returning? Oh, okay, it wants me to return the, um, how many items are here? And then we are modifying the actual character array here. So we return six and the first six characters of the input array should be A2, two because we have two items here, B2 because we have two items here, C3 because we have three items here. So the groups are AA, BB, CCC. This compresses to A2, B2, C3. What have you tried so far, Coop? Like, I think we need to keep track to some extent of like where, like, I'm thinking that this is something like a two pointer approach kind of thing, because I want to keep track of like, not only the, the items that I'm looking at, but where in the position I can like, where in the position I can actually do it. Um, so I'm thinking that, yeah, like I, I would probably use something like a two pointer approach just to keep track of 
the item where I need to write stuff. Does that make sense? Oh, so you're storing like, you're counting the frequency somewhere? Like you're, you're maybe keeping a hash map or something of the items that you've seen? Yeah, yeah, I think, I think we can do something like that. I think we can do something like um, while you're doing it. I don't think we need any extra space, to be honest. I want to probably have two pointers. One where I'm writing and one just kind of like the start of a group. And I'm going to check if we are at the end of a group with the same character and then write the value at wherever I need to write the value at, right? And then just keep going with the same thing. So they ask us to do constant space, but they don't have any necessarily like anything on our runtime. So let's try to take a stab at this. So let's go ahead and set something here. I'm going to call it anchor. And this is just going to be the start of the current group of characters, right? So we're going to have something like, here's the start of the current group of characters. So this is just going to let me know where in my, like, where in my process I'm at. I'm going to have another one that's just going to be like how many items I've written. So the position to write, like, you know, this is going to keep track of where I'm actually going to be writing if I need to write. So this is going to be the position um, to write or, you know, the length. And just to keep track, let's go ahead and um, keep my, my items here. So I can start with this, right? I can start with this and go through my items. So I'm gonna have something that's gonna keep track of my current group of characters, like where they start, so that I know like, okay, am, am I still in a specific value um, or in a specific uh, group? And then another item or another pointer variable or whatever you wanna call it, that's gonna keep track of where I'm gonna be writing. Now let's go ahead and loop through here. So I'm gonna go through my whole array. So um, n is just the, the amount of characters that I have here. And then I'm gonna increment this. So I'm gonna be reading items and this is kind of like a buffer, right? Like I'm gonna be reading items one by one. So since we have our anchor, that's gonna be kind of keeping track of different things. That's gonna be the start of my current group of characters. And I'm reading items onto my characters. Like I'm reading items from my, from my array. I'm going to check if we're at the end of a group of the same character, right? Because we wanna go, so if I see A, I'm good, I'll check the next character. Is it A as well? And then I'll keep doing that until I'm no longer in the same group. So if my characters, sorry, now, um, what do I wanna do here? So I'm going through my reads and I want to check if my read plus one is equal to the item. So if I'm at the end of my array or the character that I'm currently looking at is not equal to the character that comes after that, right? So why, why am I doing this here first? Because I'm checking, hey, I'm at the, am I, am I gonna get to the end here? Like, am I at the end of the road here? Or, if the items don't match, right? Like if I'm currently at the beginning of the array or, or if I'm currently here on the second item at A and the next one that comes is B and they're not the same, then I know I'm at the end of a group, right? Does that make sense so far? For sure, Mohammed. take care. Um, we have to consider a case when occurrence of a char is greater than a 10, so gets to one and zero. Yes, yes, yes. So we have we have to consider that because we need to split them into like you know, if it's 10, it would be one and zero. If it's 12, it will be one and two and so on. So we do need to consider that as well. So, um, and we'll get to that in just a second. So for now, I'm just checking. Am I at the end of my character array? Like, am I at, you know, at the end of the row? Um, or is, or am I at the end of a group, right? So here, and um, check if at end of, um, array or end of group. So if I'm at the end of the array or I'm at the end of the group, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up, right, my right. So that's, that's the place where I'm going to be writing in my items, right? Like wherever I found my, my end of the road, that means that I'm at the end of the value. 
So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna check. Um, and this is anchor. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to write the value at the position of my current, you know, position or length. And this is or length. Um, and I'm gonna set it equal to whatever value I have at my anchor, right? Like whatever my anchor was. So the start of my current characters. So for example, if I'm at zero, then I would add A as, as my initial item of my array. And then in here, if my read is greater than my anchor, which could happen because I'm already way past the value, right? Like because I saw multiple A's or because I saw multiple C's or whatnot. So if my read is greater than my anchor, let's get how many items I actually have. So I'm gonna remove um, anchor minus one, sorry, anchor plus one, because my anchor is gonna be, I'm trying to get the count. And if my anchor is indices, I don't wanna use um, the index. I wanna use the actual count. So I'm gonna check, okay, if the read is greater than my anchor, that means that I have more than one item. Then I'm gonna check the count, which is just gonna be read minus my anchor plus one. How about we transform my count into a string and then just like add the values that we need to add, right? Like if for example, I transform 10 into a string and I do one zero, and then I transform this into a character array, I would have one comma zero. So I can just transform my count into a string and then get a character array from it. And this is just a, this is just an example, like you can probably do this with math, like using modulo or um, division, like with modulo and division, you can remove items from the back of, the, of, um, of an integer, or you can start like getting single digits from an integer. But just for this use case, let's go ahead and go with this approach where I'm just gonna transform it into a string and then get the character array from it. My uh, char array, so let's go ahead and, and call it here like um, count char, <laughs> char array. I don't know, I don't have a better name for that. So in my count char array, what I said I was gonna do is I'm going to then to string um, not to binary string, just to string my count and then to char array, right? So what am I doing here? Like for example, if I have 10, I'm going to convert it to a string, which is gonna give me, you know, a string containing 10, and then I'm gonna turn that into a character array. And this might be good if we don't have like, you know, unless for some reason we just have like a million repeating characters. This shouldn't really be an issue. This should at most be like, whatever, let's say a hundred. So at most it should run through three items. So it shouldn't really be that like that much of an issue. And then I'm going to uh, loop for every character in my count care array. And I'm gonna write them to my, to my array, right? Like for example, um, in here, let's say that we, that we saw A and then we saw A. Right, so we saw the first A, we saw the second A, and we're here at the end because now we're at the end of my of my group, right? So what I would do here is that I need to add my A, but then the next item that I need to add is the frequency of it. So in this case, this is going to be um, count, um, sorry, the frequency is two. So in this case, the count is gonna be two, I'm gonna transform it onto a string and then it's gonna be a character array with just one item. So in this case, my count care array is going to just be um, an array containing two. And then I need to add that onto my 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 original um, characters. So I think it's called cars, write plus plus, and then I'm just gonna set my C. And this takes care of when we have only a count that's, le that's less than nine and it also takes care if the count is, as we we saw here, if the count is 10 or more, then this will split it into the specific values and write what it needs to write. Does that make sense so far? I hope that makes sense so far. Then what I wanna do is just set my anchor to read plus one, 
because um, I wanna be I wanna be able to increase what I'm doing, right? Like if if I'm already here at the end over here, so I'm at A. I don't want to continue to be at A, right? Like I want to make sure that now I'm on the next um, anchor. So I'm gonna go ahead and increment that by one, just so that I can have my anchor be um, the right value. Then I can just return right, right? Like at this point, I can just return right. Coop, I think this is it, Coop. What do you think? I don't know, I haven't written it. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't run it yet. Correct me if I'm wrong, or maybe this doesn't make any sense, but I think this is it. Yeah, there we go. Boom. Boom. So the output was A2, B2, C3. A2, B2, C3. And we are passing all of them. And then if I submit this, fingers crossed it passes all of them. There we go. One millisecond and it beats 99%. 99.5% of users. Awesome. Well, thank you very much guys for sticking around. Really appreciate it. Um, feel free to reach out to me as always on Instagram. I try to keep an eye on that if you have any questions or anything. Um, and yeah, make sure to send me some questions and anything that you'd like and I can either reply to you on Instagram or we can check it here on the stream and we can see like, you know, as we did today, right? Like we go through some problems we try to figure out how to make them work. We try to figure out, um, you know, best approaches. And I'll try to explain some of the things that I know. And, and what I don't know, we'll learn together. <laughs> Stay curious, keep learning, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.